Sundays over at the, the grandparents' house, and um, it just truly does feel like coming home. Of course, you can imagine Mr. Seifert has just been the consummate host. He's a, a real classy person, so I've enjoyed my week here. I appreciate the NBA sponsoring this session this morning. The students here have been nothing but nice, respectful. As I emailed somebody back in Iowa, I said, the kids are just really sweet, and uh, so they've been a lot of fun. And, thank all of you for coming out on this Saturday morning. Um, I do have an agenda, and but I would like to keep a, a, a more informal and kind of casual tone to our session. So if you have questions or anything you'd like for me to elaborate on or debate about or whatever, please feel free to, to chime in. And uh, Mr. Seifert said I did plan on giving a break about 10.30, roughly halfway through. So there are two, two parts to what I'd like to do today. The first, I call just the, the rehearsal of philosophy. So it's just sort of an overarching view of the entire rehearsal. And then after our break, I want to get into some real nuts and bolts of what I consider are common performance <coughs> problem areas for band. And um, so I, I hope you'll find some benefit in just sort of this overarching look at the rehearsal, but then also we'll dig in uh, just some of my ideas about how to tackle issues with sound, intonation, precision, and some of those things that all of us face daily. So the first part, the rehearsal of philosophy, I, it, I think it doesn't matter where you are in your career. You may be a student here at Eastern, you haven't had a formal teaching position yet, or you might be like me, um, you've taught over 30 years, I think it's healthy to take time and reflect on how we approach rehearsal. Um, there's always something to learn. We all get into bad habits sometimes, so I think it's important to reflect about how we approach rehearsal planning, how we execute rehearsals, and are we handling that process to the best of our ability, or are there changes that need to be made. So I just want to share some thoughts about what I do and, and what I think about. So in terms of personal preparation, you've selected your program, you've prepared your scores, you've developed your interpretation, which is the most important part of the individual preparation process. That, that is the goal of score study, is developing a, a personal interpretation or how you're going to bring that music to life with your students. And you've thought out all of the conducting considerations. What are the, the difficult aspects? And you've, you've fully thought through how you're going to approach the, the piece in terms of conducting. The planning process begins well in advance of that first rehearsal. And I think we have to approach planning both on a macro level and a micro level. When you have your your cycle, and I'm just going to use a five-week cycle because that's the cycle we have at Iowa. Some schools are, are longer, they give more concerts, some are longer, but I'm just going to deal with a five-week cycle. But it's important that we all think about within whatever your cycle of time is, from, from when you'll begin your rehearsal to the performance, that you estimate the amount of rehearsal time that's going to be required for each Piece. That's, that's absolutely essential. And that's based on length, it could be based on difficulty or a combination of the two. And you may have a work that's, that's short, that's extremely difficult, that's going to take the lion's share of your rehearsal time. So it's important that we assess, okay, within our five-week cycle, we have this much music, and I need to start thinking about how much time each piece is going to require to get it performance ready. Um, I like the whole part whole approach to rehearsal. So I'm going to, we have just a little bit of a, a light one over here, so I hope you can, you can see. So if I put down, rehearsal. 
typically our our concert would be on this Thursday night. If this is Monday, Wednesday, Thursday rehearsals. So I approach in a in a whole part whole. This week, my goal is to get through, be sure that we can get through the music. <coughs> now sometimes that's just not a possibility. If we take on a really heavy weight work, um, it, it may take some time to be able to, to get all the way through it. But my first goal is to rough in each piece, to try to get through each piece, regardless of how successful, from top to bottom, and to get it roughed in. I hope to do that by the end of this first week. We started um, last Monday, this past Monday, uh, Wine Dark Sea by John Mackey. So we just did a, a read through the entire 30 minute symphony. We got all the way through it. That's a very encouraging sign for me. There were no major pitfalls. It doesn't sound that great. It's like we can get through this, so I have something to work with. So I use this holistically and this. This is our dress rehearsal. But we have to be concert ready no later than here. So the middle three weeks, which doesn't leave me but nine rehearsals, so then I will start breaking pieces down into um, more micro forms, but whole, then into the parts here, and then uh, back to the whole. And this week, this fourth week, I start transitioning. We, we start getting through larger section so we're building toward getting back to um, to big parts as much as possible I read I read pieces at performance tempo and sometimes we can't do that and I understand the reality of this but I I don't want to under rehearse a piece for too long because you probably all know that once a band sort of settles in a tempo it can be really difficult to move them out of it whether we started something that's too fast or something that's too slow, trying to get them to move out of that is difficult. So I try to get at that performance tempo as quickly as I can. I also try to utilize technology. Uh, before we begin a cycle, I'll send them sound files from YouTube. It's free. I'll go through and, and pick out nice representative uh, files of our, our literature, not for, I always stress to them, I'm not sending these to you so you learn how it goes. We, we may not even follow this interpretation, but it's just for them to hear the pieces, get them excited about the new music that's coming up so they can understand that just a little bit more. Um, the fifth and final week, as I, as I mentioned, is um, we're in rehearsing large units. And I think this is really important from a musical understanding perspective that if, if, a, if a band is experiencing the total work, so they're, they're performing the work in its entirety, say only once, and that would be the concert, then that, that's a real disservice to them in terms of their ability to synthesize that piece of music, to understand what that piece of music is about. And that is a big part of what we're about. There's this idea of we have to experience the whole before we can understand what the composer is communicating through the piece. Now, I will say that in Illinois, um, in most occasions, we never went, when I was in the band, we never performed a work in its entirety until the concert. Now, we I remember we had about eight rehearsals between concerts. I mean, We'd go into a concert playing Bums Rush and be like, yeah, I'm not sure I remember this section. <laughs> and it's unnerving. I also, you, you can imagine being in the mindset of, okay, so everything that I'm thinking about in that situation is just my part. I, I've got to make sure that I'm focused on my part. Rather than if a group is able to go through a piece a couple of times, and I'm not an advocate for just running, just running. This has to be approached strategically. But so there are enough full runs of a piece where the students can experience Wine Dark Sea or Blue Shades or To Kelly Shenandoah, whatever the case may be, from beginning to end without stopping. But also that they have the confidence to know, yeah, we've performed this three times without stopping, we're good. 
and it relaxes them. And so they can enjoy that performance more than just, oh my goodness, we've got to hold on here. And so I, I would encourage whatever you do to, as you're ramping up for your concert, and, and even before the dress rehearsal, to find ways to, to perform large sections or the entire pieces. I don't know that I'd be running entire pieces here, but I would certainly be headed toward that here. I try to use Fridays as soon as I can. I call them continuity Fridays. And this, we might not be able to run a work, or I don't want to dedicate the time to running a piece there, but we might run a really big section as we get into this to start to start putting things back together. And it also helps me from an assessment point of view. It's like, okay, how we worked these independent sections, let's put them all together, I'll record it. Are we really ready to go on it? Or what work still needs to be done? I certainly will run the program down in our band room here. Regardless of anything else, this, this Friday we're running the program. Kids get excited about that. We work all these, you know, we, we take on about 60 minutes of music usually, so they get excited finally. Okay, we need to run it down. And this day here, that tends to be, um, I'll record this concert, and again, I, I want to be sure that we're, we're working big picture, but that one is more of a, a true blown rehearsal of, okay, this section, in wide dark C, first movement's not going well, so we'll work on that, we'll work on that. Headed into our dress rehearsal on this Wednesday. And even in Illinois, I remember our dress rehearsal, we didn't run complete works. We were, we were stopping, and, but this is a dress rehearsal, so we go through the entire program. So I think you wanna think about how you're managing your time so that you, you enable your students to experience the total work. That's really important as a musician but also to give them that confidence that, <coughs> yes, we can get through this. Be sure to remember that however you approach these, the middle weeks when you're, you're, you're chunking pieces, that you chunk, but you include transitions. I think that is a fatal mistake when we, we work pieces, often work pieces by form. And so we may take, okay, take from the beginning to letter C. Let's say that's the, the first section, okay? On Wednesday, we'll take from letter C to letter E. Find a way to dovetail. Because the, the problems that we encounter are not the sections themselves. The problems are in the transitions. So you want to find a way, if, you're, if you work A to C on Monday, and then my goal on Wednesday is C to E, then back up eight measures into the material you worked on Monday or, or back up a letter. Okay, let's work that transition into the slow section so that you're reinforcing that. How do you <coughs> get from one section to the other? As an adjudicator, I find that's, that's where a lot of the problem spots are. So build that into your planning. Don't just go A to C, C to E. You've got you've to make those connections. So work the transitions. Often, I will get later in a, in a rehearsal cycle, I'll take a day and work only transitions. So if we have 10 really difficult transitions, I've got a legal pad, okay, and I'll go through. I don't know that my kids enjoy those rehearsals very much because it's a real, okay, let's, let's play here. Okay, we're skipping to here, we're skipping to here, but I'll go through and make sure that we can handle those transitions into the sections. Typically, in a rehearsal, I also work whole part whole. So I'll begin with the section, just, just like this structure, whole part whole. I'll begin with the section that we're working on, and then I'll, I'll break it down into segments, and I'll put it back together again to really see what we accomplished. I think it's important to do the putting the back together again before you move on rather than segment, 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 and then move on to something else. Give them a chance to go through. Let's, what's going on here? All right. <laughs> Give them a chance to go back. Okay, we've broken this down into four different sections. Now let's put it back together. Oh, great. 
that's better. They have a sense of accomplishment and you can move on. So I try to be really methodical about what I, I'm doing. And again, I, I build upon work done in an earlier rehearsal by reviewing or performing a section, like I said, transitions usually. But maybe on Wednesday, let's go from A to E. So that way we review from A to C that we worked on Monday. It also encompasses the new section, C to E, plus the transition. So I may do that so we don't get too far away from that section that we, we worked on Monday. And again, Fridays, I, I kind of like when I can, when I feel it's time to start putting things together. They like those days. They want to play. They want to play. And so I, I use those days to um, let them play a little bit and uh, keep some of that material fresh. Yeah, I, I often don't start at the beginning of a piece. I, I think um, you know, everyone has their own way of, of working. And I think conductors that don't have a, a method that they've thought out, they'll often start at the beginning, like a, a marching band show. You know, okay, we're gonna start with the opener. Well, a contest, the opener and middle two, you know, sections are really good. The closer's not very strong. As you can tell, yep, they didn't get to it very often. I tend to work back to front. So I so the ending of the work I know is going to be really strong. Sometimes I work from the middle out. I just like to do different approaches to that, but I'd caution you from getting up there and just okay, beginning and go. So think about how you can structure that so the entire piece is getting a due amount of rehearsal time. Be sure, obviously, that you give adequate time to the really challenging sections. That sort of goes without saying, but you want to make sure those difficult passages are adequately reinforced. And it's important, I, I have found, it's not, it's not successful to give a lot of rehearsal time to something that's really difficult and then leave it. So regardless of your approach, if you have a really difficult section that you've spent a lot of time on, you say, well, I can't get back to that every day. You've got to find a way to reinforce that work. Or, and I work with older students, we lose that. If I don't come back and make sure that we cycle back around and say, this is a really difficult section, I've got to make sure that we keep that pretty fresh or that hour that we spent on that is gone. And the younger your students are, the less able they're they're able to retain that. So you just want to keep those in check. That's our really difficult section in this program. We're going to spend a lot of time on that, so find a way to, to reinforce that. Don't leave it for two weeks or whatever, because then you, you may just have to, to start over. It's important that you understand your group really well. I think this is where it gets a bit tricky is how you anticipate you have your three pieces or you have your five pieces and it's just a sometimes a bit of a guessing game how much time is piece a going to take piece b piece c i've even gone so far as to assign each of the compositions of a percentage so i think wine dark c is going to take 40 percent of our rehearsal time I think Blue Shades is going to take 30%. I think, and I will assign percentages. Maybe Valdrez is going to take 15% or 10%. So I will actually go through and do that and get the minutes. You know, I will add up the minutes and say, okay, my dark C out of five weeks gets this many minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm a type A, if you can't tell, kind of like him. Very mathematical sort of approach. So I think, okay. And that's just, that's a bit of a guess, because I've certainly taken on pieces, like that's going to take a lot of work, and suddenly the reading went really well, and it's like, oh, well that's a pleasant surprise. This isn't going to take as much time as I initially thought. And then I've had the other ones where it's like, oh, this, this should go easily and quickly. It's like, uh-oh, this isn't, we've hit some walls here, and this is a problem. So I would encourage you to, to estimate that, that timing. I also, in my scores, I didn't bring an example, but I'm a post-it note person. And so I'll put a post-it note on the inside 
of each score, I'll put the date and I'll put the section of music that we rehearsed on that date for how many minutes. Because if I get into a work like Wine Dark Sea, we're doing Tam O'Shanter, we're doing uh, Blue Shades, we're doing La Forza del Destino, that's a lot of rep. I don't know that I can remember when was the last time I, I did this. So I just take notes to myself. Okay, on March 3rd, Wine Dark Sea, you know, L to O, 20 minutes. And it helps me pace, okay, am I giving that piece enough time, too much time, not enough time, and so it, it helps me just keep track of myself. I hope you have a system for yourself and not just sort of guess, you know, sort of a gut feeling. So I hope you have some, some sort of method that you use to track how much you're rehearsing what section. Um, it's important, I found, that you hit the spot where you start putting the pieces back together at the right time. Have any of you been in that situation where you started that too late? <laughs> oh, you're lucky. You're lucky if you, if I have one person. Okay, so we make two. When I'm starting to put pieces back together, going, oh, I don't know if we're gonna make this. I, I waited too long to sort of ramp up to this continuity and giving them a chance to play that. That's an uneasy feeling, that you know, I should have started this a rehearsal earlier. Or if you do it too soon, then you're, I think you're, you're wasting time in a sense. You're not really utilizing your time. So finding that time for your band where, okay, we've, we've done our initial reading, we've roughed it in, we can get from top to bottom. That is the first fundamental goal of, of preparing your pieces. I learned that from Gary Smith. He said, number one, the band has to get from top to bottom, regardless of what condition it's in. And then you can 